Hey everybody, Comic Book Steve here again. Got another quick haul for you. Um, well, I'm going to try to make this one quick. Don't have quite as many books as I usually have, so let's see if we can bang through this. I got some more Silver Age ones, so I'm pretty excited about that. So, uh, yeah, let's get started. I got this book for $1.99, like the price tag says, at a local comic shop. Uh, it's a magazine, uh, Mega, Mar Mega Marvel. Don't know what type of magazine that was. I guess that this was a um, uh, some kind of advanced preview book Marvel did in the late '90s, mid '90s. Um, but anyway, this one I, I picked it up because I thought it was fun seeing the original uh, approved design for Ben Riley Spider-Man before they switched it up again. Uh, he had the, I guess, the original design that Bagley, Mark Bagley, uh, designed had this blue in the middle. Uh, you might have seen this picture online before. Um, there's another one floating around uh, of Dan Jurgens' rendition of it before it was changed. Um, but yeah, I thought it was fun. I think this, this design is not as strong as the uh, design they went with, which ended up being uh, the current Spider-Girls design in the MC2 universe. Uh, but yeah, I thought it was interesting nonetheless uh, for Buck 99. Couldn't pass it up. Don't don't really see these ever. I didn't even know about this magazine, so so I'd get it while I could. And I got another one from that magazine um, about the Scarlet Spider. Not not quite as cool, but still cool nonetheless. Uh, then we got some dollar bin books. Spectacular Spider-Man 137. Really awesome cover. Can't, can't pass up the black Spider-Man costume. This is a nostalgic one for me. I remember having this when I was uh, in grade school. So, I don't even know what age I was. Maybe 10? I don't know. But yeah, very, very uh, awesome cover. Don't see Tarantula too much anymore. Uh, this one's pretty fun. The Amazing Spider-Man Sunday Spectacular by Marcos Martin and Stanley. So I think this is just a collection of backup stories they did that was were running through the Amazing Spider-Man series uh, a few years back. So I don't believe it's any new material, but it's still awesome to see it all collected together. I think Marcos Martin is one of the best Spider-Man artists that out there, and I really wish he would do like a consistent run on the book again. I think he did a few storylines here and there, so he probably... He didn't really do any consistent run, but he was one of the rotating artists for a while. Um, but I'd really like to see him do like a straight run. It would be really awesome. But anyway, yeah, I haven't seen this book before, so thought I'd pick it up. Pretty fun. Dark Hawk number twenty-five. Awesome enhanced cover there with his blast coming out of his chest. Um, I remember when they started doing enhanced covers in the nineties. This was this was the one I was waiting for. I was like, if there's someone that needs an enhanced cover, there's Dark Hawk with his Dark Force Blast shooting out of his chest. And sure enough, I got it, and uh, I, I was thrilled. I had this when I was younger. Um, it got destroyed, um, so I was glad to find it again. Cheap. Maximum security number one. Nothing too special about this. Just a event book from the late 90s, I believe. Um, Ronan the Accuser on the cover. This is when they made, I guess, the, the all the alien races of the Marvel Universe decided that Earth was going to be a prison. It's kind of an interesting concept. I'd like to uh, collect all these and see how that went down because you don't really hear any reference to it nowadays. Uh, then another event book from that same era, uh, Contest of Champions 2. I knew about Contest of Champions 1, I never knew there was a Contest of Champions 2, so I thought I'd pick it up for a buck. This is, no this is another one I'd be interested in um, finding finding all the parts of. It's part one of five, so uh, four more to go. And uh, it'd be interesting to see what the story was on that, because I, I never hear any reference to it at all. So, yep. Probably wasn't that special. Uh, then we got Avengers six, Avengers Annual 16. This one uh, was pretty fun. It is the Avengers of that era facing off against characters who had died. 
um, and most of them have since returned. You see, we have we have Drax the Destroyer here. Uh, I assume that's supposed to be Norman Osborn, the Green Goblin, uh, the Swordsman who came back in Thunderbolts and then died again. Terax, who this was in '87, so Terax definitely came back during the New Warriors run in the '90s. Although I don't know where the 616 iteration of Terax is. I know there's a Terax running around in uh, the Avengers books right now, but that's from a different universe, so don't know where our 616 Terax ended up. Uh, Captain Marvel's still dead. I don't know who this vampire looking guy is. Hyperion is definitely back now, so it's kind of funny to look at this and see all the characters that have since returned. Uh, Hulk number 41 from the Bruce Jones run. Uh, I just got this for the cover. I really hate the Bruce Jones run. Um, it started out well enough, but then uh, the mystery that uh, was the center of it kind of got dragged out, and then the resolution was fairly lame. Um, this cover is a little dirty. You can probably see some dirt on the, the white over there, but nonetheless, it's a pretty fun cover. Uh, another one from Dollar Bin, Hulk 294. Uh, this is another one I used to have a long time ago. This was, this this may be the first comic book I ever owned. I remember being very young with this and playing with it in the uh, the restaurant me and my family were at, much to my parents' dismay. Um, I just remember that cover very vivid, very vividly, and this was in 1983. So I must have grabbed it off the shelf. Uh, at some point, or my parents bought it for me. Um, but yeah, three years old. Totally destroyed the book, I'm sure. Still fun to have again. Uh, this one was also Dollar Bin Hulk 177 versus Warlock. Uh, I thought that was a good deal on it, a dollar. I was kind of surprised to see it in there. I didn't notice this pretty big uh, fold up the corner going from. Yeah. And so that was kind of disappointing, but can't pass it up for a book. Uh, Invincible Iron Man number one from Fractions Run, and then uh, I guess this is a variant cover from the same um, the same run from uh, number one as well. I don't, I'm not sure which one is the variant cover, but one of them is. And then we get Thor 600. Uh, this took place during the Dark Reign, so you can get a glimpse of the uh, Dark Avengers in this. Uh, I really like this book. Uh, Olivier, Olivier Copiel was the artist. Uh, probably one of the best artists uh, in the business right now, in my opinion. Uh, this one is also a dollar bin. This is... Doctor Strange 36. This one's fun because it is the. It's not only an Infinity Gauntlet tie in, it is in the Infinity Gauntlet epilogue. So at the end of Infinity Gauntlet 6, uh, Warlock gets the uh, Infinity Gauntlet. Um, and then, you know, a few pages later, he goes away. Uh, this is what happens afterwards. Um, this is the stopgap in between. Um, Infinity Gauntlet 6, and then Warlock and the Infinity Watch. So, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, I don't I don't see it too often. Um, and I'm a big fan of the Infinity Gauntlet, so I thought I'd pick it up. Uh, this guy I found at my comic shop for cover price. I was really glad to uh, see that after Vin Crew's informative video about this being Miss Marvel's, Camilla, or Camilla Khan's first time in a Miss Marvel outfit, predating Miss Marvel number one. Uh, so, really glad to find this for cover price. This doesn't go for a lot, um, but it's, I think it's a good book to have nonetheless. And she's a really cool character. Now we're getting into some, <clears throat> excuse me, some Silver Age books that I picked up. This is Thor 129. Um, so I picked this up, I got, I got this for 15 
this one has been on my list for a while. This is the first appearance of Ares, who is not quite used anymore. Uh, he died during um, Siege, that event that occurred in 2009, I think. Um, but he was a really fun character when they used him. He was big in Dark Reign and in the Mighty Avengers during the initiative. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they bring him back or hell, even use him in the movie. Um, speculation there. But he was a lot, he was really fun. Um, I was sad to see him go, and I'd like to see them bring him back in some form or another. Uh, I, when I see this on eBay, it's usually, I can only find very good copies, and they usually want like 20, 30, 40. Uh, it's not too often where I see a, a high grade or a, a mid to high grade show up. Um, this copy is not great. The cover is clean. Uh, it does have some pencil writing in the middle there that I didn't notice when I picked it up. Um, shame on me. Uh, the problem with this store I go to is that um, it's close to work. So I go during lunch and I only have an hour for lunch. And it takes about half an hour to get to this place. So I kind of have to look through the boxes quick. Um, and that's how I end up missing uh, that writing on the cover. Uh, but other than that, it's fairly okay. There's some ticks on the spine. It's got some chipping up at the top. And it's definitely got a little piece missing on the top right corner. Um, the back has got some browning on it. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with it. I would love to get a better copy, but I am I am very satisfied with this for now. Uh, so yeah, first appearance of Ares. Very cool. Uh, the next one I got was another $15 one. I was really surprised to see this one for cheap, or cheapish, considering. Uh, <clears throat> Tales to Astonish number 90. This is the first appearance of the Abomination, who is not really used now. I think he died, but um, he's a very key Hulk villain. That, I mean, he's between him and the leader. Uh, one of them is the, is the. I mean, it's arguable which one is the uh, Hulk's, you know, uh, number one villain. Um, so I was really surprised to see this go for so cheap, and it's a really nice copy. Uh, there's some minor ticks on the side. Uh, it's got a very light bend up at the top right corner. Oh, it does, I think the biggest problem with it is that it has some spine roll. You can see the, uh, uh, the 12, uh, the, the one digit on the 12 cent um, price is kind of on the back. So that was that was a shame, but they only had two copies, and the other one was in uh, worse condition. Uh, yeah, first appearance of uh, Abomination. Really, really cool to see it. Um, key issue for the Hulk for sure. Definitely underrated. Definitely way underrated. Even on eBay, this book doesn't even go for that much. Um, Twenty bucks, you know. But yeah, really cool. And with that, I picked up number ninety-one. Which has them on the cover. This one, this one is a beautiful copy. Other than the uh, the white being like a, a cream, it is it is flat, it is glossy, it is. This is a really gorgeous copy. I was super happy to have this. This was another fifteen dollar book. Um, really awesome. Uh, I can't say enough about it. Super glad to have it. Uh, another thing about this is that. Uh, it's the second appearance of the Abomination, but um, Hulk and the Abomination, uh, their battles were two of my favorite uh, verse battles when I was uh, growing up, when I was collecting in the 90s. So I, I went through a little period where I was collecting, I was trying to collect all the Abomination appearances as much as I could when I was a kid, and, and these these two these two always eluded me. Not not really eluded me, but I just never even considered getting because I figured they would be way too much. So I'm really glad to see that they're underrated now, but I'm surprised they are underrated because I think the Abomination is a pretty key villain. But anyway, enough rambling from me. Uh, I got another two more here. This one is another $15 one. This is, uh, you guys all know this one. This was hot. Um, a couple of years ago, a year ago. It's still a fairly hot book. 
This is Amazing Adventures number one, the first solo Black Widow, and I, I think it's the first solo in humans. It predates in humans number one, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I was, I was really glad to find this. And this issue was actually in the Iron Man section, so I'm not sure if someone was trying to hide it. Um, but yeah, really glad to find it. A decent price, pretty nice copy. The white's a little musty. Um, some minor ticks on the side, but overall, I am really happy with it. So, yeah. And the last one I got is not really the best for last, but still cool nonetheless. Tales of Suspense 82. This is, I, according to online sites, this is the first appearance of the Adaptoid, who is of nobody, you know. There's no speculation in this. I just, you know, I picked it up. I picked it up today when I picked up uh, Tales of Astonish '91, and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't just walk out of the place with one book. I wanted to get a, a Captain America book. They didn't have too many good ones from his solo series, but for some reason, this store has a lot of old Tales of Astonish and old Tales of Suspense. Um, there's a couple other ones I'm eyeing. I'm looking at. Uh, <clears throat> The first appearance of Titanium Man. I might get that. That one's 20, so I'm kind of on the fence about it. Oh, uh, one question I do have for you guys. It, since I'm new to this Silver Age collecting, something, some, sometimes I see copies with um, uh, staples, like not on the spine, but kind of like on the cover a bit. Like it would be over here, and then the staple on the bottom would be on the spine, so it looks offset, you know what I mean? Uh, so I kind of avoid avoid those ones, I usually only go for the ones that have the staples on the spine. My, my question, because that kind of, it makes me think that someone restapled it. I don't, but then I had a friend mention to me that that could be just poor, staple, this poor stapling procedure they had when they, you know, back in the day. Um, is that true? Is, am I just being too paranoid avoiding books like that? Um, does that bring the price down, or is that uh, evidence of someone restapling it? Uh, so yeah, if you have any information on that, let me know. Um, the, the overall condition of this book is pretty solid. Um, it's got some bends on the, on the bottom, but overall, pretty happy with it. Alright, the next part of this is for Spidey Fan 78 subscriber contest. Uh, congratulations on 500 subscribers. That's pretty awesome. Um, I think this is a great idea for a contest. Uh, I've never, I've never, well, I at least live in California, but I wasn't collecting then, uh, so I've never been to Frank and Sons. Um, so I think it's really awesome. A great idea. Um, again, congratulations. So the question was for a book that I regret buying, uh, and I will definitely, I definitely have one. Um, I was trying to think of more than one, um, but I, I usually go for dollar bin books. I'm usually fairly cautious on what I pick up, but this one is definitely on my on my list of uh, books I regret getting. This is Strange Tales 180, First Appearance of Gamora. Great book to have offhand, but the problem with this one was I paid 60 for it right like a week before Guardians of the Galaxy came out in the theaters I was dying to get this book and on eBay they wanted so much for it and every every book that was in like a decent price range had like severe um, color loss on the cover and it was driving me nuts so I, I saw this one pop up for a buy it now 60 so the colors look great which they do um, and I, I bought it I didn't look at the other, there's another picture of the back of it. I didn't realize, the guy listed it is very fine. I don't think it's very fine. Uh, the back of it's very, like, brown. And that's what uh, makes me upset. So the back has some tearing. Uh, it's very, it's not brown, but it's very dirty. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't classify this as a very fine, and I certainly wouldn't put it in sixty dollar range. Thirty dollars, I would pay for this. I mean, it's flat, but I think if I waited, I could have got uh, a much better copy for a better price. Um, yeah, that's my, that's my, my biggest regret so far.
Uh, I, I think it's the most I've spent on a one single book since I've been in my new collecting uh, phase. And yeah, that's about it. Uh, totally getting into this Silver Age collection uh, stuff. Um, I might pick up another copy of this one day in a better uh, condition. But, uh, you know, it's still good to have. But I, I wish I would have waited a little bit. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all later.